This video is a recording of one of my one-on-one -on -one sessions with a mentee of mine. The conversation that we had together in this one-on-one -on -one is without a doubt one of the best conversations I have ever had with a trader. And it's my belief that if you listen to this conversation and take away everything that there is to take away from it, you yourself can utilize this info to dramatically improve your experience as a trader. Now, fair warning. It is almost exclusively a trading psychology talk. So for those of you who are only here for technical analysis and 90% ICT silver bullet strategies, leave and probably quit trading as well. As if you think that that stuff is going to lead you to success, you might as well quit while you're still ahead. Now for the rest of you, this conversation is just audio. So feel free to set your phones down, maybe listen to this in a audio format while on a car drive or something of that nature, you will not have to be present at the screen. There's some parts at the very end, I share my screen, but the conversation alone is more than capable of you understanding in just an audio format. Now this video is over an hour long, so get ready for that. And before we begin, I should mention, if you want to learn from me, you could join my discord down in the description. Without further ado, I hope you're ready for this conversation that I had with a mentee. Okay, so you're asking how, like, how is it possible yeah. things are yeah. accurate? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. <laughs> I think it's, um, it's one of those things where you, you're never, ever, ever going to understand why the market does what it does, no matter how good you get. Nobody will. You could look at every interview with every great trader of all time the best traders of all time they will say the same thing and every good trader will say the same thing as well and it's that you'll never understand why the market is doing what it's doing and you'll never know what the market is going to do also i think it's one of those things where you just have to accept that some things happen and don't look too deep into it because you could look so deep into it that you'll just get lost in it and and you'll 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 sit there forever not progressing because you'll be trying to figure out what's going on um when in reality the the market's trading is about making money it's not about understanding why my line on the chart works uh, as far as i know i have no idea why the line on my chart works it just does it just hits and it does over and over and over again and it's done for a very long time and so that's an edge that i could utilize to make money um i don't care how it works it would be cool to know but at the end of the day i don't think no anybody knows because there's no there's no truth in the marketplace there is no answer in the sense of there's no one thing that's right and there's no one thing that's wrong uh, my order block level could be somebody else's resistance level that could be somebody else's moving average that could be somebody else's uh what is uh, trader sumo called the trend start level i don't know it could be it could be 500 different things at one price level and you you talk to 50 different traders and each of them are going to have a different opinion about exactly why price did what it did so i think at the end of the day um if you search for truth in technical analysis you're going to be looking forever because it, it doesn't exist there is no answer to the market it's just it's a set of technical analysis that we use that somewhat describes price action and does so decently well enough where I could have an edge where I can make money. That's all I care about. But if you get too caught up in it, you're gonna you're just gonna be lost in it. It's gonna be impossible to progress because you're gonna be so caught up in why these things are happening. Why is it possible? How is it working? And, and trust me, I went down that road. Man. <laughs> I went down that road. I think every trader in history has gone down that road. But um, also every great trader in history has also come to the end of that road and recognized. They have to just accept that they don't know. <laughs> but, but, you know, why do you think that 90% is failing? Um, I think 90% of traders fail. Uh, first off, I should preface with, I think technical analysis is the least important part of trading of everything. I think it's I think it's the absolute bottom of the barrel, least important thing you'll ever use in, in your trading in terms of profitable trading. I don't care about somebody being accurate. I don't care about somebody being anything. And I think 
you look at, well, if you want to know why 99% of traders are failing, you need to look at what 99% of traders are doing. And 99% of traders are sitting there fiending for accuracy. All they care about is getting better. They feel like they need to understand what the market is doing, even though they'll never understand what the market is doing. They feel like they need to make money quickly. They have this whole totally wrong idea of what trading is. They think it's the technical analysis and not themselves. When in the, for the most part, it's yourselves. Like you could have a twenty, you could have a twenty percent win rate and be wildly profitable in these markets. Um, I think for the most part, it's it's the fact that ninety nine percent of traders think success in trading is something that it isn't. Success in trading is not being good on the charts. Success in trading is not being accurate. Success in trading is not having an understanding of what the market is going to do. It's it's none of that. It's being able to completely and entirely control your, your yourself, your discipline, your ability to stay calm, your ability to not care about a loser, uh, a loser, the ability to think of probabilities, to not give credit to a particular trade, an individual trade. Instead, look at things in a more uh, holistic, probabilistic uh, viewpoint in the sense of like, you know, in the, in the, instead of caring like, oh my gosh, I just lost the position right now. Blah, blah, blah. What did I do wrong? What's wrong? Oh my gosh, I'm so bad. What TA did I miss? What did I do wrong? Instead, it's just, yeah, it is what it is. I took a loss and, oh, well, the thing didn't work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but uh, for me, <coughs> for me, um, I am still working on the first chapter. And I think the first chapter of your videos are meant to be to understand on market direction. I think if you don't understand that part, then you will have a hard time. Well, I think I think the key word here is it's not to understand. I don't understand anything about these markets at all. I don't come into the chart and understand the market. I don't. I have no idea what the market's going to do. I would be lying if I told you I ever knew what the market was going to do. I think it's just a tool set that gives you a probabilistic edge that sometimes works. If this is happening, then 60% of the time it's going to go down. But that still means 400 times out of 1,000 you're going to be wrong. I don't understand that. That's just a random chance. And I'm not saying the markets are random, but it is, I'm saying the markets are probabilistic. Um... So it's not meant to make you understand anything. It's just meant to give you a tool set that where if you place these lines on the chart, um, it'll help you place a trade that has a chance of winning or losing. That's it. And when you are, well, I mean, uh, sorry, but uh, it's now a little bit shitty because I'm actually not, uh, I'm still on the vessel and I'm planning now to take trades from uh, from tomorrow. Yep. And um, so when I'm at home, I can actually share my screen and I will oh, tell all right. you why. Um, but I'm actually logging some trades now, but it's not on Excel. It's, it's on Notion. But mm -hmm. I am saving them. And later on, I will fill them in Excel because it's a little bit hard me because i'm trading only on my phone at the moment so it's a bit hard i think you could um i think you could invite me to a notion page yeah yeah that that could uh that could work if that works better for you oh i will i will figure something out all right but the 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 thing is that you know do you think a lot of people will quit trading? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, because I think a lot of people listen, I I think I think people I think a lot of people are forced to quit trading, but by their own will, I don't think a lot of people will quit trading. And I think it's because a lot of people, in my opinion, trade for the wrong reason. Like if 
if I was to ask somebody, why are you trading? Is it to make money or are you satisfying a gambling addiction by risking money? Or are you just trading because you want to solve a problem in the sense of they like technical analysis, they like the charts in the same way somebody likes chess, uh, but they don't really, they're not really doing it to make money, but they, they have an, they, they really like the solving the problem bit, or they really have some sort of gambling addiction in their, in their background where they enjoy risking money and they want to satisfy that in some way. So I think the majority of traders are in those two camps where I think a lot of people are not in the, in the very deep part of their being. I don't think a lot of people are actually trading to make money. I think a lot of people say that, but I think a lot of people are not trading to make money. I think for the most part, people are trying to trade because they like the idea of solving the problem of the chart, which is unfortunate because the chart doesn't have an answer. And they like the idea of satisfying their gambling addiction. So no, I, I don't think given... Um, given their own choice, their own free choice, I don't think many people would, would voluntarily quit trading, but, but I think uh, a lot of people get forced to because they lose other money. <laughs> yeah, but that's true. That's, that's actually true. Mm -hmm. But the thing is for me, why... Why are people in your mentorship succeeding and some don't? What are the people that are doing that do not succeed? What are what are they doing and why are they losing? What do you think they're doing? Well, if you if you had a guess, if you just a wild guess, what what do you what do you think they're doing differently? Because I'll tell you, I'll give you I'll give you one hint. Some of the most successful people to come out of this mentorship have been, ironically, some of the people with the worst technical analysis ability out of everybody. And mm -hmm. there's also been people to come out with some of the best technical analysis ability out of everybody. So it's not that. I'll tell you that right off the bat. It's certainly not so, technical analysis. So I think... A logging is also a part of it, but I, I think why people fail is, I mean, that, that's, this is also a thing what I am experiencing and that is that they think that the entry is the most important part of the trade and actually for example, uh, yeah, it's a bit hard to explain, but in my opinion, if you just wait, for example, mm -hmm. and, and the setup is there, then a lot of times what I am experiencing is it just hits the stop loss and then it goes away. So I knew that the price was going that way, but the order placement or something yeah i i fail a lot of times i mean that's that's the problem what i have but i also think and i think it's a little bit a natural feeling that you always want the highest rr so mm -hmm. then you automatically place your stop loss at a risky place and i believe that if you are, if you have, uh, if you made a bias and your bias is to go long, for example, and you may, you place an order to go long and you're fucked because your stop loss was eventually good, but uh, it got eventually hit, then in my experience, I had just really bad luck. But when I get stopped out because I placed a stop loss too tight, yeah, that's that's really, I think, um, how do you say that? That's what an experienced trader will not really likely to get, I think. I think, huh? I mean, I'm now, I am now 
uh, trying some uh, some things out, and I am really trying to figure out my bias, you know. Yeah. And <laughs> then I just wait on the one minute chart, and I will put my stop loss where I usually put my entry, a little bit, a little bit like that, and not hey, yeah. exactly, but. A little bit in that area and then i just put my stop loss at a random place like but it doesn't feel I, right it's hard to explain, <laughs> but it do, it doesn't feel right or no. uh, for example it doesn't feel right to put my stop loss there okay. i don't know what it well, is, we'll, but... we'll get to that in one second because i think if you're putting your stop loss at a random spot there's probably a problem <laughs> but <laughs> um yeah. but um I want to take it back because the the conversation that started was you said, what do you think makes these people different? That I asked you what you thought these people did differently. And you mm -hmm. talked about particular ways they did things, particular um, places they put their stop loss, for example, or focusing too much on the entry and stuff like that. And just to go deeper into that, because I agree the people who fail do do that. But why do you think they do that? Like, what do you think drives that person to do that? Because if you could get into the, the, the actual cause for that thought process, you could understand why the people who are failing are doing, like actions are only, the actions you take on the chart are only a reflection of the thoughts that come about in your mind. So if you could get into the root understanding of why these people are doing those actions by understanding how they were thinking, why they have the beliefs that they do for justifying some of the things that they're doing. And that could help to understand that in yourself as well. So I would ask you the question, why do you think people try to tighten up their stop losses too much to get bigger risk reward? Why do you think that, uh, you know, people do all these execution mistakes and people care so much about getting a perfect uh, entry? Is it, is it ego? Is it is it is it this idea that um, a good trader has to be extremely accurate? Is it this like what do you think that is? I also think that uh, I think people are executing maybe also too fast. And Why? What would drive a person I, uh, to do that? Yeah, people that maybe wants to earn quick money, I don't know, mm -hmm. or 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 doesn't have a basic set of rules applied for themselves. Yep. Like, hey, I want to check minimum of five minutes on the daily chart, for example. Yeah. Because I I can see it in myself that. Sometimes I think, oh, this is a setup. This is a setup. I have to get in fast, fast, fast. <laughs> and then in the end, I didn't get failed or something. And then I was like, oh, I'm glad I uh, I didn't took that trade, for example. For sure. Um, but, to, but, but to come back at the question, I think it's also greed. Greed. I think, yeah, I think so. I don't know. Well, I, yeah. I, I agree. I agree. And, and I wish I could, <laughs> I wish I could know every difference because then you could, you could build a, a perfect trader almost. But I will say one thing that I've come to understand that almost every single person who finds success in trading has in common is kind of their belief about what a good trader even means and what a good trader even is. So the reason why I think this is important is because if you believe that a good trader is, for example, a good trader is somebody who makes, uh, you know, 50R a month, is extremely accurate with their entries, a good trader is somebody who's always in trades, a good trader is somebody who doesn't let opportunities pass them, a good trader is somebody that, um, you know, has is able to tighten their stop loss because their entries are accurate enough be a good because their entries are accurate enough uh means that a good trader is also somebody that uh understands the market and knows where it's going a good trader is, is all this and that and i think when it comes down to it those 
basic beliefs that 99% of traders have may also be the reason that 99% of them are failing. Because I'll tell you what, the 1% of traders that are succeeding do not think that way at all. Uh, they do not have that belief about what a good trader is. You look at um, people like Dr. David Paul. You look at people like Tom Haugard. I don't know if you know these people, but these are some of the best traders living. Well, Dr. David Paul is dead now, but these are some of the best traders that have ever lived in, in recent history. And you read their books, you listen to talks they've done, interviews. They do not have the same beliefs as to what a good trader is that 99% of traders do, in which I said, you know, people believing all this external stuff about uh, whatnot. And I think the reason that's important is because let's say you have the belief that part of being a good trader is not letting opportunities pass you and take uh, actually and even being in trades. Like if your definition of a good trader has anything to do with being in trades or not letting opportunities pass you, what does that cause? That causes FOMO because all of a sudden, if you're not in the trade and you're missing it by your definition, you're a bad trader. Now, if you let an opportunity pass without taking it, you're a bad trader. Now you can't do that. If your definition of a good trader has anything to do with your win rate, or, or your average risk reward, or wins or losses in general, um, you know, you'll sit down in the chart and you'll take a loss and you'll, you'll implode because by your definition, you can't take a loss if you're a good trader. If your definition of a good trader and what that really means to you has anything to do with, uh, for example, how much risk rewards you get or what your monthly returns are on, on a monetary or percent basis, you won't be able to do the bigger stop loss to let your ideas play because you won't accept that you can widen your stop loss. You won't accept that you can just let the move run because by your definition, a good trader is somebody who gets a lot of risk reward. And finally, if you, in your definition of what a good trader is, has anything to do with the good trader understands the marketplace, how are you ever going to be able to cope in a marketplace that's ultimately probabilities? Because you might be really great at technical analysis, but when your level is wrong or your idea fails or the setup just happens to fail, you're not going to be able to accept that because by your definition, a good trader is somebody who understands the market and that can't be further from the truth. And I've, I've never seen somebody that would fit that 1% category that succeeds. I've never seen somebody with those same beliefs um, as the 99%. And in fact, the idea that I've adopted for what I believe a good trader is, is simply and only and exclusively somebody who does not lose more than they wanted to during a trading day. And that is it. I don't care if they understood what the market was going to do. I don't care if they thought it was going to go up or down. I don't care if they made $1, a million dollars, lost $10, lost 50,000. I don't care. It doesn't matter. The only thing in my vision of what a good trader, and, and it doesn't even have to do with being in trades. I, I'm not going to over trade and I'm not going to FOMO. I'm not going to chase a move because my definition of a good trader has nothing to do with being in trades. I don't care about being in trades. It's not a big deal for me. So long as I'm not losing more than I want to lose. So I think that this shift in mindset, at least what I've noticed from people I've talked to personally, and from also listening to some of the greatest traders of all time, dead and alive, um, that is a huge thing. It's just their beliefs around it. Because if you really understand what that means, like the, the beliefs you have about what a good trader is influences how you actually trade on a day-to-day -day basis a huge amount, because you're going to be trying to emulate that. If you believe a good trader is X and Y, that's exactly what you're going to do on the chart. And guess what? 99% of traders believe damn near the same thing. And I don't think it's a good thing. Um, so that's what I would say. I would say that's the biggest difference in my opinion from what I've seen. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's trading is, is, 
is a weird it's actually also weird in my opinion <laughs> it's I extremely mean, weird <laughs> i mean for example um we talking about this liquidity um, and uh, about where the stop losses are but we actually don't know that i mean that's an nope. assumption that is an assumption yeah it might be a likely assumption but we still have no idea <laughs> no but yeah so for me i'm a really strict guy you know i'm i have uh, i make for everything alive i make like different kind of step you know for me this is the easiest part in life you know to have a clear routine you know for sure i mean and i want to create that for trading as well but i think that routine's important i think it's super important but lucky you <laughs> yeah i will stick to, i will stick to your guidance because i am searching and trading a lot of time and i think this is not wasted because i think people that are completely new also find your videos but i i i've been on this road you know where i bought a course you know and it was completely dog shit you know that and i saw this guy i think this trader you were talking about that died this 99 year old guy yeah he he was also talking in a, in a conference room like yeah and uh pay it should be it is really stupid you know to buy somebody's course to teach you how to trade you know he was laughing about that and i mean i was doing that you know yeah. like buying courses and but i didn't really know that this was just a way for them to make money you know just, no, just it's, it's a huge course. it's a huge way to i'll give you some context for example i have 1100 subscribers on youtube that's it that's my only source of advertising this patreon is making me six thousand dollars a month that is ridiculous <laughs> and imagine somebody 80 times my size i'm basically a nobody in this space nobody knows me and the trading education space is insane and look at the tiers i have i have a 30 dollar tier a 70 dollar tier and mentorship is 200 bucks there's people who sell that stuff for $2,500. <laughs> like their normal tier is $250. They have thousands of members. So yeah, a lot a lot of the times that the educators in the space are, are, are doing for that. And, and I would be lying if I said I would not be happy if the Patreon grew to a more sizable portion of my income. But I think um, well, that's just because I think anybody likes having multiple sources of income and diversifying and stuff. But I think it's important to... Um, you know, I also agree that if you're learning from somebody that's solely pushing a narrative of technical analysis, this and that, it's not, it's not real. It's not genuine. My goal for men these, these mentorship calls, I want this to be valuable to somebody who doesn't even use the technical analysis that I show. You can use it, you can if you want. It's just an option for you. My whole goal and what I'm trying to give people is not technical analysis, but rather my experience as a trader. Because I think that's what a mentor should do, right? If that's really what they are and that's really what they're doing. I'm trying to help people have a foundation where success in trading is even possible at all. Because I think a lot of people, they search for the answer for so long, again, in a marketplace with, where there is no answer. There is no real answer. It's just people who win and people who fail on their own accord based on their own thoughts and based off their own ideas. You see people, you know, one of the greatest traders of all time, I think, um, if I'm not mistaken, Paul Tudor Jones, he was extremely wealthy. 
He was one of the most profitable traders of all time. You want to know what his strategy was? He sold breakouts of a 200 moving average on a daily chart. And he bought breakouts of a 200 moving average on a daily chart. And that's all he did. That was it. That was his entire strategy. He made hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars doing that. So when I hear anybody claiming, oh, I have this one thing, buy my course, the technical analysis will make you profitable. That is a huge red flag in my eyes because that to me shows huge signs that that person doesn't know what they're doing at all because a real trader that's actually successful in this, somebody who really knows what's going on, somebody who's really gone through it themselves would understand that that's not, that's not what success in trading is. And that's why a lot of times in these one-on-ones and, and a lot of times in, in the, the videos I make and, and the way I talk and the way I speak and the things I say in the live trading session, a lot of times it's not dramatically focused on, hey, look at this TA, look how accurate this is, look how perfect this is, look at this. I give people a set of tools to say, hey, this is how I trade. I'll show you how I trade. But also look at everything else that I'm saying. What I want people to take away from mentorship, from being in the tears, from everything is not necessarily the TA. And I'll, I'll say, I think I'm pretty damn good at TA. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm bad at that. I think I'm pretty damn good. I think I'm pretty accurate. But what I want people to take away is to lean off of the experience I have failing for a very long time. I did that for a very long time. I failed for a very long time. Uh, every single issue I talk about mental, technical, on the charts, off the charts, the only reason I speak about it is because I went through it. <laughs> and I, I made that same mistake hundreds of times over again. Um, so if, if, if I can help somebody have a foundation of profitability where or or not of profitability but a foundation of a chance to 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 help somebody rearrange their mindset their psychology their their belief about what a good trader is like we were just talking about their belief about the markets in general if i could help somebody rearrange that to a point where i know hey if this person leaves now it doesn't really matter what TA that you go and use. I believe that this person could be profitable now because their their mental has been fixed. They have fixed themselves. Their uh, trading psychology has be re been rearranged. And I think when we talk about uh, what makes people succeed and fail, I think this is it. And I think you can tell very early on when you talk to somebody. I think if you sat down with somebody and dissected their beliefs about money, about the markets, about trading, about technical analysis, about everything, you could sit down and probably with a score of 90, like 95%, you could probably tell that person straight in their eyes if they're ever going to succeed or not. I think a lot of people, um, and, and I don't care how good they are at TA. I don't care how good they are at technical. Now, you could be the best in the world. I could sit down and tell you if you're going to succeed or not in trading. And, and I'll tell you, a lot of people are really good at TA, but not a lot of people do well. <laughs> and, um, you know, I think it's because a lot of people's foundations are shaky. It's not good. They have the wrong beliefs about what, what being a good trader is. They have the wrong beliefs about technical analysis. They have the wrong beliefs about everything. They believe that they have to have control. They believe that, um, you know, being a good trader is all the things that we talked about and, and not what it really is. And when you see real good traders, when you see real professionals who have been doing this for a long time, and you compare their thought processes and their way of thinking to any online guru figure or person that's just there to sell you a course, for the most part, and I would say there's some good people out there, but for the most part, I I would bet like oh I would bet almost every dollar in my bank account that 90% of those guys almost have diametrically opposed viewpoints. Uh, yeah. <laughs> in all ways possible. <laughs> so like I think there's a point to I want to help people get better at technical analysis. I think there's a level to that. And I think there is also a, uh, a part of consistency and success of trader that is technical. You need to have some sort of system. You, you can't just, uh, you can just enter randomly, but you need to have something, right? So I'll show people that something, but, but the main thing that I want people to take away from uh, knowing me, learning from me or anything like that is not that. I want people to take away uh, everything else that I have to offer, which is, uh, the experience and the 
um, the foundations. I just want people's foundation. I want it to be where if if uh, Maxi wants to leave mentorship tomorrow and go learn somebody else's technical analysis, the the, the stuff that I told him can still. I could be assured that even if he leaves tomorrow, doesn't use my TA or anything, I could be assured that at least that person has a chance to be profitable because at least their beliefs um, and their foundation of trading is is somewhat corrected. Um, so yeah. that's my that's my whole goal. I I, I think people who are or who are selling a dream of this technical analysis system is going to make you rich or look at my ninety percent accurate ICT silver bullet strategy. <laughs> Fucking like it's it's mind boggling. How these people are even real <laughs> yeah yeah i'm i understand with that you want i mean yeah it's mind-boggling for me yeah it's but yeah in this world there are not a lot of people that are truly honest you know no, no there's mean? not there's not i mean yeah so but to be clear um the technical analysis isn't the biggest part of everything you mean yeah i think it's right? the smallest part of everything i think it's the smallest part of everything in fact uh, I think you have to be okay at it, but at the same time, dude, if, if, if there's people out here making money on fucking moving average breakouts with a 20% win rate, like, come on, <laughs> how can anybody what sit with this? Are we doing that? Yeah. What, yeah. what are people doing? How can anybody say with a straight face that technical analysis is something of the utmost importance? But when you look at the difference between those two people, uh, Paul, Tudor Jones, for example, um, and I'm using him because he's the guy that had the 20% win rate that made money <laughs> with moving average breakouts. <laughs> he's that guy. He's, he's repping. He made hundreds of millions of dollars for real. <laughs> and um, he did that for many, many, many years, uh, decades even. And you look at that guy and then you, you, you compare him to a person, uh, just a normal person. And it's, it, he'll be, fucking, he won't be able to, like the, the the person who's not making money will be able to out chart Paul any day. They'll be they'll be way more, way better on the charts than that guy. They'll be able to say everything that's gonna hit. This is the level. This is the level. This is where it's going. This is what it's doing. But when it comes down to the to the root of it, um, you know, they'll lose in the long run. Yeah, I understand what you mean. Yeah. So actually, the thing is, you also you also want. Of course, everybody wants to earn money. For sure. In this market. And I mean, yeah, of course, you look at the people that earn the most. And I think you also see people that earn a shit ton of money. They are not overcomplicating it. Nope. And I think, I think that's also a thing of mine that I overcomplicate uh, it a bit so I want to focus um, um, yeah how do you say that? this roadmap of yours I want to do I want to simplify it yep and I really want to start with the basics you know like and with the liquidity and you were you were talking about the liquidity in the beginning, like these market direction videos. Yep. And to give a little bit a logic understanding on where the price might be going, you know. For sure. What is what the most realistic way is, and then you always have a chance, you know, that it goes against it. Yep. But I think if you have a logic understanding, I think you are then most of the time, you have to be right. Otherwise, nobody can ever make money in this market. Right? Well, I don't think you have to be right most of the time. You just have to be right sometimes. 
There's yeah. there's many people who make a lot of money being right 10% of the time. A lot of money. <laughs> you just uh you just got to make sure you because there's another side to this, right? You're not you're not making $1 when you win and losing $1 when you lose. You might be making $10 when you win and losing $1 when you lose. So you could be right 15, 20% of the time and still make a lot of money in these markets so long as your average risk to reward is is big enough. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But actually, to talk about the things you are teaching, eh? I mean, it is not like outlaid as a course. You know what nope. I mean? Nope, nope. And just ideas, ideas to use. Uh, I mean, I show one particular type of setup, but um, and the reason, again, is because. To me, it's too it's too much. Like I feel like it tra it's trading shouldn't it's not that hard. It's really not like it shouldn't be. Some, I don't think your your technical system should be something you have to study for three years to get good at. You should be able to pick it up, uh, you know, watch through maybe a couple of videos, under understand a few things, and then you have all the tools you need. Uh, I think. What you're saying about simplifying things is a great way to go. That's exact. That's exactly what I did in the beginning. My trading now is quite a bit different than what I did in the beginning, even when I was on this technical analysis. Because, um, in the start, all I focused on was allowing myself to play my idea. So I don't know if you could join my screen share because you said you wanted to simplify this stuff right off the bat, and I think. Uh, we can, and I think there is a very straightforward roadmap to consistency in trading. I think it's extremely straightforward. Um, hey, here, do you see my screen? Uh, yeah, hold on. Uh, yeah, I can see it. Okay. So, here we go. Let's take any any chart quickly. It, it doesn't really matter. What, what asset uh, do you trade the most? Uh, Euro USD. Okay, let's take Euro USD. Euro USD. Let's uh, look at a high time frame. For the most part, when you zoom out, Euro USD has, for the most part, traded down. Right, it's gone down. Mm -hmm. Okay. If I had to ask you, out of all the candles on the daily chart, what percentage of candles do you think were down candles versus what percentage of candles do you think were up candles? Do you think it's eighty uh, percent down candles because overall it's gone down? You think it's twenty per twenty percent, or uh, like ninety percent down? Can what? It, uh, just just if you had a guess, I think I think sixty percent down, maybe thirty percent up. You want to know the funny part about all this? Even in a market like the S and P, that's only gone up forever. And you could do this. I don't think you're gonna do this. You could go back and count and tally up every daily candle and for every asset class that's existed for long enough to have substantial data, it's always exactly 50-50. Exactly 50-50. There might be exceptions in very, very interesting markets like USD Try, where this thing literally only goes up. But even then, in, in, the, in the middle of it, there's a lot of down days in there. The up days are big, but there's a lot of down days in the, in the, in the choppiness. And the, the, the crazy thing is that, you know, for even a market like the S&P that's only gone up, the amount of up days and down days are exactly 50-50. Exactly. Almost exactly. It's, it's within a margin of error that's, um, you know, very, very close. And the same thing goes for most all assets. And the reason I'm saying this is because this leads to the first part of this potential roadmap that you said that uh, you potentially want to have. So in, in, in my opinion, if you... If you could come with the understanding that when you, if, if that's true, what I just said, that it's about 50 50, like look at this down, look at this downtrend. You count the down candles and the up candles. Well, there's damn near just as many up candles as there is down candles. The, the down candles are just yeah. slightly bigger. And I think if you can understand that, if that's true, if what I'm saying is true, which you're going to have to take my word for it right now, but I can assure you, you could go to any market that has data and it will be true. Um, except again, very weird circumstances and some Forex pairs with like 
things where their inflation is just it only goes up <laughs> there is some weird very strange asset classes out there but for, for the most part on normal asset classes that's true and if that's the case then that gives you a target because if you could go into every day of trading understanding that the direction of the day is without a doubt undeniably a coin flip i don't care if you're in an uptrend or a downtrend over the span of thousands and thousands of days it's roughly a coin flip if it's going to be a moving up day or a moving down day what what, what direction the candle is going to close obviously you can't do much with that information in the moment on the day but this could start to get you to a point where you could try to skew this a little bit so if the baseline is 50 50 then when you come up with your idea for the day and this is as far as I think technical analysis matters in the sense of profitability. You need to get your bias decision skills. Like, do I think today's going to move up or do I think today's going to move down? You ideally should have that to higher than 50%. So it should be like 60% you're correct about your bias. You're correct about your direction mm-hmm. on the day. And if you could get to this point, you have everything you need. And... um and the reason for that is because if, if, if your bias decision skills are less than 50%, you'd l- quite literally be better off flipping a coin. <laughs> so <laughs> you, you really need to make sure your, your, your bias skills, your, your, uh, I think today's up or I think today's down, is at least better than 50%, which still means, even if it's 60%, that still means 400 days out of, the, out of 1,000, you're, you're going to be wrong. But at least that's better than 50-50. So once you have that, the fastest way to profitability after that, in my opinion, is once you have data, so you've done it for, I don't know, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 100 times, whatever, you have substantial data that shows that, hey, my idea rate, and we're not even talking about trades yet, but my idea rate, so you come into a day and you're like, um, yeah, I think that we're going to run these highs then, then, then fall down. And that's your idea for the beginning of the day, and that's either right or, or it's wrong. And if you could get this idea rate, the general idea rate, right? It doesn't need to be perfect. I'm not telling you to go, um, I think it's going to go uh, down here, then up, then down, then up, then up. Then, no, just in general terms, it's going to go something like that. If you could get that to over 50%, you have all you need. And once you could do that, you just need to play your idea and let it play with no, no need to mindlessly optimize your risk reward with no need to mindlessly have the tightest stops imaginable, with no need to do any of that, um, and you just need to let your idea play. So like in a day like this, if you said, yeah, my idea is you're going to run these highs and then come down, you need to see it run the highs. You just need to take a position anywhere, put your fucking stop loss at a safe spot, and then target the bottom or wherever your target is and then walk away. Because if you have the data that says your idea is right 60% of the time, guess what? You only need like a one-to-one risk-reward ratio to be profitable, to make money. If you could get your win rate, if, if your idea correctness rate is 60%, and you could get your win rate within 10% of that, because there's still going to be days where you lose trades, just because mm-hmm. uh, uh, there's going to be days where you lose trade and your idea was right, just because sometimes that's what happens. But if you could get your win rate to at least 10% of your correct idea rate, that would mean your win rate gets to 50%. Um, how does your win rate get to 50%? Your win rate gets to 50% by doing not pretty things. <laughs> having big stop loss. Having things like, but if you have a 50% win rate, guess what? If you have an average risk reward of 2 to 1, if you have an average risk reward of 2 to 1, for example, you are unbelievably profitable. You are making a boatload of money at these stats. 50% win rate on a day two to one average risk reward, you beat the game. You literally beat the game. And this is what I did for a long time. This is how I still swing trade, by the way. Um, however, and that's it. That's literally it. So you, you're, you're, you optimize your correct day's idea rate, and then you just enter the goddamn trade with the safest stop loss imaginable. And yes, your risk reward is going to be lower. And yes, the trade is going to be less pretty. And yes, there's going to be times where price does this and you're sitting in drawdown for a while. But at, at the end of the day, what it's allowing you to do 
is because you're not sitting there so focused on getting the best possible entry, optimizing your risk reward, having a tiny stop, it allows you to play your idea. It allows you to play your idea. If you could play your idea, and if you could treat your idea correctness rate as your win rate, and try to meld those two together as close as possible, then you could be profitable with almost no effort. Because I mean, the only thing is you just have to let your trades play out, and you have to execute when you see them. Right? You have to try to play your uh, your idea every single day. And then afterwards, so I did this for a long time, and like I said, this is how I still swing trade for the most part. Um, after that, if you would like, because assuming you actually do that, assuming you actually can do that, now your baseline as a trader is no longer this. Now it's either break even, or slightly tilt it up. And that's all you need. If you have that slightly tilt up in your equity curve, guess what? You can make billions of dollars. You can make as much money as you would you would ever want. You don't need a, you do not need a in your equity curve. You just need a slight tilt. You have a slight tilt, you beat the game. You win life. You, all, all the money you, you, you ever want in your pocket. It's so long as you have a slight tilt that could be consistent. Now, after you have that slight, that slight tilt to your equity curve that's slightly profitable, then if you would like, you could start to optimize. Then you could start to really focus down on technical analysis. You could really start to focus down on improving your uh, average risk reward by getting your stops tighter. But that optimization has to come after you become profitable because if it becomes before you become profitable, then what are you really doing? You're sitting there optimizing a failing trader. If you're not profitable yeah. and you try to optimize, you're sitting there optimizing something that doesn't make money. So you're going to continue to not make money. So, and a lot of people see what I'm doing and they try to trade a media like me, right? They watch, they watch what I'm doing. They try to trade like me. You can't trade like me. You can't because oh. I did, I did this for a long time. I did what I'm saying for a very long time. I didn't optimize right off the bat. I didn't, I didn't always make 70 R months. That wasn't a normal thing for me because I did this. I was before I ever optimized, before I got good at trading, I got consistent at trading. And um, I think that's super important. And I think this is the fastest way to profit. I was, I became profitable very quickly, very quickly, because it's not that hard to do what I'm saying here. Just have an idea on the day, make sure your bias or your day's idea is at least 50 doesn't have to be 60 percent it could even be like 55 or 51 percent of the time you're right anything better than 50 51 percent of the time you're right your win rate's now 41 percent okay if you have a two to one average risk reward guess what you're making as much money as you want you make as much money as you want you don't have to get 10 r like me you don't have to make 60 r months like me you can get to the point that i'm at but you have to get to this point first you have to and then yeah. once you're at this point optimize the shit out of your trading do whatever you want <laughs> get you get your entry here and get your stop loss here and make your 50 r but you have to you have to go through you have to go through the get myself profitable first because that makes your baseline something you could work with and this is bread and butter this is bread and butter i know i will forever be profitable for the rest of my life because i could do this and i know i could do this i've proved it to myself i know there will i'm ex exceedingly confident in my ability to take money from the markets because I could do this because I've done this for a very long time. So I think this is the quickest quote unquote roadmap to that success that you're talking about, which is yeah. just not worrying about the small things, but worrying about the broader idea and just playing that idea, which sounds obvious, but think about it. When, when a lot of people have an idea, they don't just play the idea. no, <laughs> they get in here they try to play the shit out of every single tiny thing in here they try to play it here they try to optimize optimize away this and that and when in reality they look back at the end of the day and they're like damn my idea was right but I just I just got fucked over <laughs> what the hell happened because I was I tried to have yeah. my stop loss above this high instead instead of this one because I thought that I wanted 20R instead of 3 but what they didn't realize is by wanting 20R now their win rate is 10% and now that their win rate's 10% Guess what? They actually need the average 10R to even break even. But if their win rate was like 45% or 50%, then they would only need like 2R 
to, to make money. So yeah. I think people over optimizing like this really hurt them. And that, that's what I would say the blueprint is. It would be coming to a conclusion. And in my opinion, the, you know, you could do it with uh, liquidity. Like, like I talk about, I think that's in my opinion, that's the best way. I'll show you an example on uh, Australian dollar, Japanese yen. Um, I shorted the fuck out of this or uh, uh, Aussie dollar. Not that short of the hell of this uh, yesterday. Um, in this trade, imagine this was like a 15 minute chart or something. It doesn't have to, because I'm swing trading on my on my Forex account. Um, but this could be a, a 15 minute chart for all you care. So I get my direction. Why am I, why was I bearish in this example? Well, on the higher time frame, you're holding through this monthly. Cool. You started to move down. I thought, hey, maybe now that you're through, for example, the mean threshold of this order block, you know, now that you're through that, I think that potentially you could fall down to 65, 256 um, and take this low to gain the order block. Okay, cool. On a lower time frame, um, this was that monthly open that you're pushing against. You had this weekly fair value gap that was sitting here. And this could, for all you care, this could be a five minute fair value gap. That, that's, that's irrelevant. Um, drop down on a daily chart. Um, you have all these wicks up interior here. You swept this high into the weekly fair value gap. You swept equal highs on a lower time frame here. Equal highs, relative equal highs, swept. I'm exterior, bearish. I think that this low could potentially eventually get taken out. We swept highs here, traded into a high time frame level. We have easy opposing liquidity right here. You want to know how I entered this trade on my swing account? And the reason I'm talking about my swing account is because my swing trading account emulates very closely what I'm talking about. Um, yeah. My scalping account's different because my scalping account, the one that I day trade with day to day, that is optimized to the fuck. <laughs> that, that is optimized to hell. That's, that's, I want the biggest risk reward and I want it right now because that's how I, I'm doing scalping. But this is how I'm proposing you get to a baseline of profitability if you even want the chance to be able to optimize. I got onto the market when the market was trading around here. You know what I did? I don't even think I looked at the hour. Yeah. The market was trading like here. I just fucking market entered and put my stop loss above the high and targeted these lows. And that was it. That was my whole trade. I don't care where the market is. The market could have been fucking down here for all I care. It doesn't matter to me because I have an idea and I know that my idea correctness rate is like 70 or 80%. So I know that if I could get my win rate anywhere near this, shit, I don't care if the market's fucking here. Because if I could have a safe stop loss, I could two two point six R is profitable at that moment. That's profitable. Yeah, that's totally profitable. Now, let's say you get really good at this and you get to a point where you are profitable with that. Cool, drop it. Start optimizing. You want to start optimizing? We can start optimizing. We have the inversion for value gap here, the order block here, interior equal highs swept, interior equal highs swept into the inversion for value gap. This wick. The midpoint of that, you could go short there with a stop loss there, for example. Boom. Now you've optimized to like a 50R in the trade, but you, you shouldn't be trying to do that right off the bat. You should just, instead of worrying about your entry, worry about the idea and worry about where the safe stop loss is so that your win rate could be big enough that the low risk reward still makes you profitable. And once you get profitable, do this all you want. Get as good as you want, but you have to make that foundation profitable. I think that's the in terms of like a roadmap to success in trading, that's what I'll tell somebody. I think that would be the quickest way. If I if I was given somebody and they said they had six months to be profitable or they die, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I would tell them that. I would say, listen, uh, I'm going to help you get to a point where you have uh, a decent understanding of bias. You could kind of understand where you think or where you believe the market might go. And then you just need to have that idea and then you also need to have an understanding of where a safe stop loss is. And you just need to get in the fucking trade. <laughs> you just need to get in it, put your stop loss there, and then and then leave and let it play out. I don't care if this is a one minute chart, a four hour, a daily, a weekly, a monthly, a uh, 15 second chart. It doesn't matter to me. Um, you just need to be able to allow your idea play because I think a lot of times people don't allow their idea to play. I think a lot of times what people don't really realize is that... Um, I, I, I have the personal belief that the vast majority of people 
are probably profitable, but they just don't know it because they don't let themselves, um, they don't let themselves like bask in that profitability because they're, they think they're optimizing away things, but they're just screwing themselves over because they're not ready to do that yet. They're not ready because they're, they're not profitable, but I think they are because I think for the most part, people are pretty good at just kind of getting an understanding of where they think the market's going to go. And if you, if you can have a general understanding, oh, I think the market's going to go here. I'll show you a trade that I just took on Nikkei today. In fact, literally hours before we got in this call, I took this trade. I'll show you. This is another example okay. of what I'm talking about. Imagine if this was a uh, one minute chart. It, it, it doesn't really matter. Okay. Bias. Bullish. <laughs> you yeah. know, bias. I'm bullish. Cool. Uh, weekly chart. We're trying to hold off the immediate rebounds. It's not doing too good of a job, uh, but we're trying to hold off the immediate rebounds. So if we're trying to hold off the immediate rebounds, and I'm bullish. I'm looking for longs. Daily chart. What's happening? Daily chart. Swept liquidity underneath this low. Boom. That aids my bullish bias. Four hour chart. What have we done? We wicked through this fair value gap deeper into this order block back here and also held off the weekly level. Cool. Amazing. I have a lot of th elements of a trade set up here. I have uh, external bias long. I have liquidity sweep. That's also something that I want. I have high time frame level. That's also something that I want. And I have interior type of confirmation, right? This is, you wicked through the fair value gap that was here and you didn't close it. You did not turn it inversion. Okay. And you have some semblance of opposing liquidity in the form of equal highs right here, right? It, it doesn't seem like it on this time frame, but on a lower time frame, um, you have this high and then on an even lower time frame. And in this case, you have equal highs uh, all the way across this. So boom, I have a whole trade idea here, man. So what yeah. am I going to do? Big ass motherfucking wick. Let me long that motherfucker, bro. Am I, where's my stop loss going to go? Underneath the wick. And where's my target to go here? It's only 2.8 R. I don't care. Why? Because I know that my idea correctness rate allows a 2.8 R, R trade to be, it, it allows it to be profitable. It allows it to be profitable. And this doesn't, on a lower time frame, but there's this giant wick and there's this giant wick and uh, it's touching the fair value gap and it's uh, blah, 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 blah. I don't care, bro. It's all noise. <laughs> I don't yeah. care. I don't care. Because as many things as you could justify for why this is bad, you could justify the same amount of reasons why this is good. If the interior liquidity sweep weekly, okay, but why is this bad? Well, you're holding this and and, and you gain the four-hour order block and this and that. And blah, 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 bro. <laughs> I, think, I think that is confusing people. Yeah. In the end. Don't you think? Well, it's because no matter what, like this position, when I explain it, this probably looks pretty obvious, right? Mm -hmm. But the thing is, when people get to it on their own, they're so, I think it's this, okay? Uh, I've said his name before in this um, call, but Tom Haugert has said this before. He said that people are generally, generally, people are fearful when they should be hopeful and people are hopeful when they should be fearful. And I think this is an example of this. And what I mean is somebody has the initial idea, Oh, this market looks bullish. I should long. Then they get on the lower time frame, and they already have the idea. So they should be hopeful. They should be looking for reasons why their idea could be right. They should be looking for, they already came up with the idea, but instead they come down to a lower time frame and they're fucking scared because they, they can't take a loss. They yeah. can't, they can't, they can't imagine it. So they sit here and they, you could sit here and justify everything possible for why this could go wrong. For every good trade, there's 10 reasons why it shouldn't have worked. And for every bad trade, there's 10 reasons why it should have worked. You know? <laughs> so <laughs> when, when people... You're fucking right, dude. You know hey, what I mean? Hey, listen. listen this, I experienced this myself also, you know, with this fucking fear. And, but actually, you have to be saying to yourself like, okay, what am I gonna do? Am I gonna is a uh, is it going up or is it going down? Yeah. And once you and what you are saying like okay, it's gonna go up. You just have to play it on the one. <laughs> yeah, and on the one minute it is down. That's actually 
the best price you will get. Yeah. But you you that but then you wait, then the fear comes in. And yeah. Yeah, it's true what you were saying. I experienced that myself as yeah. well. And this is this is what I'm saying. So all these things that we're talking about, it's funny how this conversation is gone because the, the first thing you asked me is what do you think the difference is between um the 99 uh, the 99% of failing traders and the 1% of successful traders and i think throughout this conversation if you talked to me and then you went to talk to somebody that was a failing trader i guarantee you you would be able to identify the difference. <laughs> Say this yeah. person doesn't really look like he's successful. <laughs> what is what is he doing? No. <laughs> but you see, yeah, the difference right. with a person like me is I I'm not falling for these basic things. Like I'm not going into a chart looking for every reason I could be wrong and being scared. I'm not scared because I don't care if I'm gonna lose. And I don't care if I'm gonna lose because winning is not part of my definition of what a good trader is. If I would have lost this trade and then lost another trade today, I would be fucking happy because I didn't lose more than I wanted to. And that's my definition of a good trader. So I'm not scared when I'm entering this position because something looks bad. I, I take a risk. And before I've even placed the trade, I've 110%, no matter what, have accepted and accepted again that if this loses, I'm okay with it. And in fact, I go into a trade assuming I've already lost. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> so how can I be scared? Yeah. There's nothing to be scared of. Um, so I'm not fearful yeah. of anything. And um, it, this is my swing trading account. And, you know, we could talk, you know, <laughs> maybe at another time because this has been going on for a while. But yeah. when, I'm, when I'm scalping, um, this is, it's a whole different beast. You have to be really good to do what I do, how I do it when I'm day trading. Because all those emotions are amplified by the short time frame, right? And when I'm scalping, I am getting tight stop losses. I am going for the big risk reward. I have optimized. But the only reason I'm able to do that consistently is because I've went through the process of allowing myself to be profitable before. I've went through the process of molding my mind and molding my beliefs around trading to a point where it's profitable no matter what. I can do anything. <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah so yeah yeah okay this was a pretty clear call um yeah it's it's uh it will take around seven more days before i fly back home yep um I will log these trades on Notion, and when I'm at home, I will log them into uh, into the Excel spreadsheet. Awesome. And uh, yeah, then we can uh, uh, let's. I will also write down, you know, about biasing. You know, that's for me the most important. Exactly. Part, yeah. You know, I'm, and that's the beginning. I mean, uh, if I if I don't do that, I'm just wasting my time. Absolutely, you are. Yeah. That that by that that understanding that idea is the root of it. Just like on Nikkei here, like I might not have had a whole daily bias, but I had a. It's it's coming up with like the idea for whatever moment you're trading. So I thought the next moment was pretty clear. You were you just held off of this, or boom, boom. That was that was my miniature bias in in that moment. Um, so it's not like you have to have the entire day mapped out, but you just have to be able to get a sense of where the market's drawing to, where do you think it's likely to go and, and get to a point where at the very least that idea is right about 50% of the time. Yeah. Exactly like this. Which again, 50% of the time sounds like a lot, but at the same time, if you take a thousand trades, that still means 500 of them are going to be wrong, <laughs> which is okay. <laughs> that, that gives you a lot of room. Yeah. I, 50% is not, 50% is certainly uh, certainly achievable. Um. Yeah. Indeed. Indeed. So, um, yeah, let's do that. And, um, uh, yeah, for me, everything is clear now. And uh, I will focus on the bias. And, um, yeah, I want to do that first.
Cool. Otherwise, yeah, that for me, it's it's the best step to do first. For sure, for sure. Uh, already, man. This this uh, this session has been going on for. Uh, I will say, I did record um, the session. If you don't mind, yeah, no worries. if I can uh, post it, because I think the conversation we had would be valuable to others. If you would like, I could I could um, like blur your name out. Or, I mean, your name is not in yeah, it. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. Right. That's uh, that's more easier. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Let's do that. Cool. Okay. Hey, uh, let's talk later and. Um... I will contact you later. I'm not very active in the se- uh, sessions. Yeah. Because uh, yeah, I am. Um, because I'm always working. Oh, that also by the way, I also said where I lived and and, sh- and shit like that. You know. Yeah. I'll uh, so, I'll go through it and and mute out yeah, yeah, mute yeah, out the no parts because I always rewatch them. Yeah. Okay. No worries. Alrighty, All right. All right. I will uh, talk to you later. I'll see you in a bit, man. Thank yeah. you. Uh, Mm-hmm. See you. Goodbye.